Welcome to Jocelyn Presents Jocelyn. Ah, that's me! Hello, scientists! Welcome back. I hope that you have something warm and snuggly because today we are taking a field trip to one of the coolest places on Earth. I'm talking about the South Pole in Antarctica. I went there a few years ago with Benjamin and we got to see some of the coolest science I've ever heard of. And when I got back, I wrote this book called Polar Science. Polar science is the study of the frozen places at each end of the Earth. The Earth has two poles. There's the North Pole and the South Pole. The North Pole is in the Arctic region and the South Pole is on the continent of Antarctica. Every year, scientists go to each of these poles, which are pretty far away from where most people live and definitely a lot colder from where most people live because there's certain projects and experiments that can only happen in these places. So it's pretty important work. Before we go on our adventure to Antarctica, I want to share with you the story of Mia and her pet Sunny the Snail and their trip to the North and South Pole and everything that they got to see there. Are you ready? Let's dive in. The day has finally arrived for Mia's big adventure. Where are you going? asks her snail friend Sunny. Mia points to the map, just to the coolest places on Earth the North and South Poles. Sunny's eyes widen in amazement. Oh, I've never been there before. Mia puts on her winter boots. It's where polar scientists go to study things like the stars and the planet. You should come with me and see for yourself. Sunny can't wait to get there. Mia places him on her shoulder and they head out the door. Their first stop is the Arctic Tundra. It's a large frozen plain surrounding the North Pole. It's buzzing with huge mosquitoes. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Mia and Sunny scramble to put on their bug gear before they get bitten. Phew, Sunny exclaims, that was a close one. Mia feels like she's stepping on top of basketballs. The ground is covered in grass clumps called tussocks which makes it hard to walk around. Let's take the helicopter to the research site, she suggests. It'll get us there faster. From the sky, Mia and Sunny take in the gorgeous view and wave to all the musk oxen in the field. And here's a little Arctic fact. A lot of the Arctic is covered in permafrost, which is soil that has been frozen for two years or more. They land next to a lake. Mia starts rummaging through her bag. Oh, I get it. We're going swimming, Sunny cheers. Mia giggles. <laughs> no, we're collecting water samples with different microbes so we can go back to the lab and learn more about them. Microbes sound like new friends. I would love to introduce myself, says Sunny. Mia puts on her gloves and starts collecting water from the lake. Okay, but you'll need to use a microscope. The microbes are so small, we can't see them without one. Sunny looks puzzled. Why would polar scientists travel all the way to the Arctic just to collect microbes from the water? Here's another Arctic fact. The microbes are collected in small glass containers. Each container can hold thousands of microbes. Mia points out the permafrost. Actually, these microbes used to be frozen. Since the planet is getting warmer, the ice has melted and now they're in the water. Polar scientists come here to collect them. Microbes help us understand how fast the Arctic ice is melting because that can affect the whole world now and in the future. Sunny is surprised. I never knew something so small can make such a big difference. Mia packs up her samples and equipment. They take one last look at the Arctic tundra and move on to their next stop. Here's one more Arctic fact. During the summer months, the Arctic has more mosquitoes than anywhere else on the planet. They lay their eggs on or near shallow pools of water that form when the permafrost melts. They leave behind the buzzing of mosquitoes and go to 
The silence of the South Pole. Sunny looks around and sees miles and miles of ice in every direction. This place looks like a giant freezer. Where are all the animals? Welcome to the South Pole, Mia says proudly. The farthest south you can go. Scientists who visit this place live in the station, which is like a little indoor town. It's too cold for animals or plants here, but you can find plenty of them along the coast of Antarctica. Mia starts up the snowmobile and hops on. Come on, Sunny, she says. I want to show you my favorite spot. Here's an Antarctica fact. The flags outside the South Pole Station represent the original 12 countries that signed the Antarctic Treaty, an agreement to protect Antarctica for science. In about four minutes, they arrive at a big blue building. The ice crunches under Mia's boots as she walks over to it. This is the Ice Cube Laboratory, she says. Sunny imagines an ice cold drink. If these are the scientists who discovered ice cubes, I'm going to need their autographs, Mia laughs. <laughs> they don't study ice cubes, they study the universe. The coolest part is that the equipment for the whole experiment is buried more than a mile under the ice. Other telescopes nearby can be used to see the stars and outer space in different ways. Sunny is confused. But we can see the stars at home. Why do scientists come all the way to the South Pole to do that? Here's another Antarctic fact. There are more than 5,000 sensors buried in the ice around the Ice Cube Laboratory. It took seven years to build it. The South Pole is a great place to study the stars, says Mia. It's on top of a giant ice sheet that is 9,300 feet high. It's very dry here, so the skies are clear and it's completely dark for six months of the year. Mia and Sunny stand in the green glow from the southern lights in the sky. This is the most magical freezer I've ever seen, Sunny says in amazement. Here's an Antarctic fact. At the South Pole, the Southern Lights, also known as the Aurora Australis, happen when particles from the sun hit gas molecules in the sky and make them glow. Back at the clubhouse, Mia shares photos of their big polar science adventure. Sunny can't wait to tell their friends about all the science he learned and why some amazing experiments can take place only in two special locations, the North and South Poles. The end. Now the second half of this book has lots of pictures about what it actually looks like at the North and the South Pole, but I'm gonna take you there myself. So the first thing we have to do is get dressed because it is cold. Very cold. You ready? Okay, I'm all warm, how about you? Let's go to Antarctica!